we have a cell phone. Like, we like to text and play games, Facebook. Everybody talks about Facebook. A lot of people are saying, follow me on Twitter. You could have a different kind of screen name. And once it's on the computer, you can't take it off. Everyone sees it. Five minutes and someone will know everything about you. I'm going to a new school, yeah. I don't know if I'm excited or nervous, actually. I want to go, but I don't want to go at the same time. Yeah. I think it's going to be difficult for me, but I'm not sure. My name's Carlos. I'm 12 years old, and I'm going to grade seven. Betty my I don't know, they see it like, they, you see it in movies that they're going to bully you because something and something. And my mom told me, you're going to get bullied if you look like a new kid that don't know what to do. But if you look like you know what you're going to do and why you're here, they're going to think you are strong even if you're not. They're not going to bully you. I'm actually very excited because it will be my first year at my like, new high school. My name is Brooke. I'm 15. I'm going into grade 10. I am nervous about a few things, but not really, because like I know I have a few great friends that I will be meeting up with back there, so it's not like I'm going to be going in all alone. High school is what decides what you're going to be, how successful you're going to be. It's a whole lot of pressure for three years of your life, you know. My name is Darian. I'm 16, and I'm going into grade 11. This is my 35th year with the district, and uh, I started out as a teaching assistant and then got my certification, and uh, I've been a teacher since 1985. My name is Debbie Johnston. I'm a mother, a teacher, and an advocate. I've been to like nine schools in the last forever, <laughs> and it's just, I don't know. Everything just seems easier to me if I join a new school. So I asked her to go to a movie. Who? Uh, Michaela. I guess how I got her number was through Facebook. I messaged her, and then we've been texting for two, three weeks almost. Facebook is like the starter point for all relationships. Nowadays. It's not real till it's Facebook official. Not many people have Facebook in Mexico, but when I came here, I wanted a Facebook because all my friends, like, wow, they have Facebook, they have, like, Twitter, and, and it's fun to chat with my friends, like, yeah. I'm always on Facebook. It's always something new I have to learn. Cause it's just on my phone, right? So it's like, I'll get a message and I'll just open up Facebook and there it is. The teachers at my school are actually trying to like calm down the cell phone use and stuff like that, but like we still use them in class. Like it's not really gonna stop the teenagers nowadays from texting their friends when they're supposed to be doing classwork. There is so much information and entertainment out there now in the cloud online. It's really part of young people's reality. It's, they don't separate their on and offline realities. My name is Professor Shaheen Sharif. I'm an associate professor at McGill University. I always had an interest in the intersection of law and education. And so when it came to McGill, uh, it was almost an automatic extension to look at cyberbullying. In the school context, uh, in terms of the way we view traditional bullying, there's always an intent to harm. It's relentless and persistent, and there's a power imbalance. A lot of bullying is homophobic. It's sexist, it's racist. Uh, it's directed to kids who are overweight or have disabilities or even gifted kids are, are targeted. Cyberbullying 
is different in that perpetrators can hide behind uh, screen names. You know, they don't see the person face to face and so it's easier to harm them. We're spreading unfair rumors about people or uh, modifying photographs and distributing them. And the worst is, of course, spreading of photographs of assault or, or beatings all over the internet. I got cyberbullied by a friend that I hadn't seen like in three years. I was just chatting in Yahoo chat. He told me like, you have a friend who wants to chat with you. Like, okay. He started to call my mom like names and my brother stupid. And he just started to tell me things about me and I don't even know why. You make me feel like, I don't know. Make me feel like I was nothing. Like, make me feel like a loser. There are many, many factors that, that will cause people to engage in this kind of bullying. There might be neglect at home. There might be socioeconomic issues. There might be mental health issues. They may be uh, rejected by teachers or ignored by teachers. Every situation is different. Pre-adolescence, adolescence, early teens is when the majority of this kind of behavior takes place. And that is because they're becoming much more socially aware, social relationships, and they're starting to define boundaries. I found out about a site a little while ago. It's called thedirty.com. Two of my best friends are on that site. They posted three different pictures of her, and it's like, they just, people like started shit about her. So it's like, they just found it right to go and just start posting it online where everyone can see and everyone's gonna just gonna start talking about it. It says like, if you guys ever see this girl run, this chick is freaking nasty. She steals and she's a dirty liar. She deserves to be on more than one of these. It's just kind of sick how some people will twist things just to have something to talk about this week. I've been in her shoes. I know how it feels to have people talking about you. Government says that like, they're trying to stop online bullying and all this stuff. Well, then how do they let sites like that just pass? How do they let things like that just nothing happen with them? They just let it go. It's like, if they're gonna stop stuff like that, they have to stop from the root, from the base of it. And you know what, those sites are starting it. I'd love to be a part of making this kind of stuff stop. It's kind of an interesting phenomenon that, that strangers want to demean um, people they've never met but it, it all becomes part of this sort of uh, a sense of social belonging. Kids who are growing up immersed in digital media are not really differentiating between joking and teasing and crossing the line uh, to criminal harassment. In many cases, young people have testified in court that it's not the person they're targeting that they're uh, really even thinking about who they're thinking about their friends and making them laugh and seeing who can make the most outrageous statements and insults and um, who can post the funniest videos and an infinite audience can participate in it. Six months ago, I got into a fight, go to somebody's backyard. We didn't even know the people, we just knew that they were gone. And it was just to see who could kick the shit out of the other person. They had the video and it's just like me being cocky. I was like, come on, you little bitch, whatever. And I was looking away and boom. I got knocked out, needless to say. And I was out for like 10 minutes. It went on YouTube and it went on Facebook and everybody had it on their phone. It went all over to different schools. I'm pretty sure even the gym teachers seen it. They didn't even report it. And I was in grade 10, right? All the grade all the 12s were laughing at me. My confidence was burnt. My ego was cut down. It, like people knock you down for something like that. It hurts, makes you not wanna you know, go to the cafeteria, makes you not want to go, you know, to the cool people couches. Maybe it was because of that incident, but I just feel like I didn't fit in there. I pretty much made my mom <laughs> switch me, because then I was like, I'm, I'm not going to school. 
when, when you're actually using real, real life video, those images are saved, produced, passed on, and every time somebody views that video or posts an insult, they're demeaned online and embarrassed online. Th those people are being victimized over and over and over again. It's devastating for a young person, especially teenagers in that adolescent period where they're establishing friendships. Friends are everything at the time. You know, that's, their reputation is the most important thing in their lives. That's why so many um, adolescents commit suicide from bullying. Jeff was a real computer geek, and he was a whiz at programming and everything. The boy, Robert, who eventually came to bully Jeff, uh, was something of a serial bully. But he'd never taken on Jeff because Jeff was much bigger and uh, stronger physically, and he was also very popular. He and a couple of his friends made their own uh, video gang. Jeff developed the gang, and he shared the password. And uh, then he sent it out to all his friends, his cousins, his grandparents. Everybody had Jeff's game so they could play it and give him feedback. And one of the kids that uh, had the password shared it with Robert. Jeff had worked about 14 months on the game, and Robert went in and signed on. He just deleted it. He set up the site to cyberbully Jeff. He put up Jeff's school picture with the picture of the Crypt Keeper. And he said, isn't this the ugliest thing you've ever seen? And uh, sent it out to everybody. He kept a running journal, like we call it blogging now, of what he'd done to Jeff, whether they'd, you know, they'd throw gum in his hair or whether they'd walk behind him and called him faggot. They made fun of the way he talked. They made fun of all his mannerisms. They made fun of what he wore. He was constantly tormenting Jeff, both online and in school. The victim is always dehumanized because then it becomes all about themselves and who they're entertaining and what they're trying to prove and, and what kind of power they're, they're trying to establish. Most kids experiences you never hear about because they don't want to report it. So we don't know how extensive the problem is because when we did research, over 50% said that they would never report it because they don't think the adults in their lives would do anything about it. And they're afraid that their, their media privileges will be taken away. After eighth grade, the little boy that I knew before all this there was so little of him left. He didn't smile anymore. He didn't hang out with friends. He didn't talk to other kids anymore. He, you know, it, he seemed tired. I worried he was coming down with something. Uh, he just kind of got quiet and uh, to himself. And uh, he was online uh, emailing with friends. I, brushed that long hair out of his eyes and kissed him goodnight. The next morning, uh, woke up and, and when we opened the door and didn't see him in the room, we uh, turned and looked the other way into his closet. And uh, Jeff had tied the strap from his book bag uh, around his neck and hung himself from the door to his closet. and. Uh, he was already gone. In Canada, there are a lot, lot of uh, parent lobbies calling for more legislation, sort of harsher legislation. And, and, you know, some of these concerns are legitimate, but we really have to think about the impact on kids who are not really mature enough to realize what they're doing and don't really have an intent, criminal intent. We have enough laws existing or legal frameworks is existing to deal with these issues. We don't need new legislation for, for cyberspace. And these kids are not going to uh, learn more in you know if they're thrown out of school and sitting in jails. So they just 
want to be heard. So if we're able to um, harness that need to be heard, we can mobilize so social networking among young people, and especially the bystanders, to turn this around in positive ways and get them to stand up for those who are being victimized and help them think through the kinds of ethical choices and legal choices that they're making and the risk, the legal risks that they run when um, they engage in this kind of behavior. After we lost him, I just, I went back over all the emails and everything that he'd sent, everything on there. I told the detectives that if there, you know, if there was a note, it would be on his computer. Uh, if there were clues, if there were proof of what had been going on, because I told them right from the beginning that it was the bullying and the cyberbullying. In the three years that it had been going on, not one person had ever come forward to tell an adult if they had we could have done something to stop it. It would no longer have been Jeff's word against Robert's. There would have been a witness. It's not just a matter of educating teachers or parents. It's a matter of educating our legislators our, and the people who make judicial decisions, the lawyers, as well as um, law enforcement. You know, the police really need to be sensitized to some of these issues. Um, this is just response that I got for my public speaking at the junior highs. It says, stand up and stop bullying on the front. I'm speaking to the grades 6, 7, 8, and 9 for National Bullying Awareness Week. I actually talked to a counselor about it at my school, and then one of the counselors from one of the other schools in my district asked me to come and speak to them about it. In some way, shape, or form, you have been bullied. Someone's walked down the hallway and just made a rude comment, that is bullying. Someone's posted a rude status or liked a status that was just harmful to someone else. That is bullying. You're actually hearing it from a grade 10 student who has gone through it, that it needs to end. But it has to be you guys that stop it. It has to be you guys that stick up for each other. If you ever need someone to talk to, you can go talk to your counselor, you can talk to your teachers, you can talk to your parents. I talked to my parents. They told me, if there's somebody who's gonna bully you or has bullied you, just talk to us. It's good to talk to us because, well, we can talk to their parents and what's happening, and we can talk and we can help you so you don't feel bad. The focus needs to be on attitudes that adults are modeling. Trust and respect. Those are responsibilities of educators and parents to foster, as well as of, of communities in general. In high school, just something about it that it's kind of scary but then again it's even tougher transition going to a new school second year in a row there's a lot of pressure that you got like from a lot of people like from your past teachers from your parents you know there's a lot of pressure especially when they see you as having so much potential or had so much potential. I bet you I could have done a little bit better if I got to a better start. Kids need to develop uh, a sense of empathy towards um, everyone they, they, they interact with. You've got to find a connection for them to, to make it real for them, to humanize it for them. It's, it's about bringing humanity back into it. Whoever you're picking on, Remember, it could be your sister, it could be your mother, it could be someone you love. Nobody ever doubted that Jeff would change the world. And uh, we really feel like, in some small way that he has, it really changed uh, everyone in, involved because the kids, I had so many of them tell me, you know, never again will I keep my mouth shut. I, I won't let this ever happen. The presentations in the schools has helped me open up and kind of get over what I've been through. But it's like I hope that it also has helped some other people get over what they've been through because it was pretty bad.
it's gotten easier because it's like I've ta started talking to people who I would have never expected me to start talking to. I've become more of a stronger, confident person about who I am, what I believe in, and what I want to do with my life. In chatting networks like Facebook, don't be friends with people you don't know. They can just bully you anytime because they're not actually your friends. They're just ignorant people who don't have anything more to do. If I see my friends getting bullied online, I will start chatting with them. I tell them just to don't pay attention with them and to delete them from that guy who's like bullying them. I have lots of dreams and like, I know how to get there. I have no doubt in myself. Kids will be mean and that you shouldn't listen to what people say because it's, you know, they're just often looking for a scapegoat or somebody to blame something on because something went wrong in their own lives. So. I feel like I put more things into perspective. I'm more aware of what I say online or do because you don't know what what's happening on the other side of the computer. You know, the person reading it. Sure, it's just words, but sometimes words hurt, right? Stop.